What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video and we are taking a look at some bases and talking about how are you going to decide what attack strategy to use on these bases. Um, biggest thing people struggle with attack wise and I pause this because before each attack I'm going to break down the base, Town Hall 13s, a few 12s and a few 11s talk about um, the weaknesses of the base and how you might look at uh, attacking them. So it's going to be a longer video, but I hope it uh, you guys enjoy it. Um, taking a look at this first Town Hall 13 base, you'll notice that the eagle is relatively exposed and also there's no air defense pointing directly out to protect it from uh, any type of air assault coming from that direction. That's a good sign that you might want to come in with um, a Yeti bomb or in this case, um, if you look at the base as a whole, it looks a little bit better for Lala. You have these expos near the town hall. The town hall is in the middle of all these defenses. It makes for good Lalo because they can just kind of path right through the base um, and not have any dead space or storages to throw off their pathing. In the town hall, um, you use the tome over the town hall, also covers all these other defenses. Um, so you'll notice as this attack goes on that um, going to Sui the king for the royal champ. Sui the queen down here, she can get some good value uh, with the help of that ice golem. And then this is all setting up that uh, next phase, which is the battle blimp. So really when you look at the base, you think, okay, maybe the battle blimp uh, with you know, a couple clones can get some good value there. The queen's nearby, maybe take her out, get, get a scatter shot, maybe an expo, maybe some of these infernos. Um, then you start to build out the Lalo, then okay, where can I get value from my king and queen? You start to work backwards from the most exploitable parts of the base. Um, so there are the clone spells, a bunch of balloons are cloned there. Um, and you can see the uh, Electro Dragon actually dies just before it can get a shot off on the queen. So it just shows this was a good strategy because it, um, it took out so much of the base here. The queen was the only thing that he really would have liked, maybe that single Inferno as well. Um, but still got a great uh, deal for what was invested there. And then coming in with these hastes just to move everything in, 50% uh, is going to be hit so the Town Hall activates. Nice freeze getting the Town Hall Expo Queen. This Town Hall being so central was a great uh, indicator that you should use Lalo because you can get so much value with the Warden's Tome in addition to just covering the Town Hall. Then the Royal Champ with a nice freeze on the single Inferno. Um, it's a great way to come in out of range of the CC, at least for most of the attack, then um, there's actually going to be some Super Barbarians coming out, which is very odd. <laughs> um, interesting CC choice, but by then all the defenses are pretty much dead, so it doesn't matter. So the Royal Champion is a good pair with Lalo. If you can put her somewhere, um, assuming the Hound or, you know, the, in this case, Goblins and Super Barbarians are not lured already, um, and they're not going to be a problem for her, but sometimes the CC building will be destroyed, or she'll be out of range for most of it anyway. So as we fast forward here, we'll take a look at one more uh, Town Hall 13 to uh, give you guys another idea of how to identify a base. This is number five. This is a base I attacked, a bit of a more simple army. And um, one thing I always see right away is the value a Yeti bomb can get. I'm just kind of programmed like that. And no sweepers, nothing really covering this Inferno. It's pretty much a free Yeti bomb. And the reason I liked it is I often try to um, how can you make a big base at Town Hall 13 narrow? Well, you had the Town Hall, the Eagle, Scatters, Expos, Heroes, Infernos, all in that same lane. Um, I wish I had a, a tool to kind of draw at the moment, but I think you can see what I'm talking about. Um, if you come in with an entry by this bomb tower and cannon, they can all kind of path through the same lane that I'm highlighting here. And most of the, almost all of the uh, high profile you know, heavy hitter defensive buildings are in that lane. So I went ahead and raged up the Yeti bomb just to make sure I get my full money's worth. Unfortunately, a spring trap was hit. And um, I think the jury might be out on whether or not any Yeti mites came out of that Yeti that hit the spring trap. If I remember correctly, they should, but maybe there was an update. Maybe I have my facts wrong. Let me know in the comments what the deal was with the spring trap and the Yetis, if it, uh, allows them to spawn Yeti Mites. I don't think it should, ideally. It should it should help nerf the Yeti Bomb uh, back to a more reasonable status if the if the Yeti Mites do not spawn, at least in my opinion. So the King to follow the other side, pretty standard stuff here. My Queen is gonna die to the Scattershot. Um, when, 
when you have the auto abilities, you got to be careful um, with stuff like the Warden and the scatter shot. Especially the scatter shot, it might target one of the archers from her ability and take her out without even targeting her herself. So I lost my queen, unfortunately. I thought the attack was going to be over when I lost my queen. But um, things still work out okay. I quaked the core, which is good if there's a lot of different compartments meeting up and it's too big for a jump spell to handle. The quake was a good idea. Dropped them early as you should. Was a little bit short on spells in terms of rages, especially towards the end here. But the Royal Champ comes in and I came in with the Royal Champ because that was away from the single Inferno. Didn't want her to get caught by a single Inferno right away. But at the same time, it was a loose end that the initial push of these Yetis wasn't going to cover. So I wanted to come in with the, uh, the Royal Champ to kind of help cover that. Used the uh, ability there a little earlier just to get the damage on that single Inferno. Because um, if you wait too long and it locks onto her, the ability is not going to matter because it'll already take down all her hit points. Even as she gets, you know, 75% back with the ability, that can disappear in a second once the single Inferno lights up. So use that champ's ability early rather than later when it's a single Inferno Tower involved. Okay, so things wrap up pretty close attack here, but I think if the queen had been alive, it wouldn't have been much, uh, wouldn't have been very close at all. I just needed to use the ability uh, myself a little earlier instead of trying to rely on the auto ability to, uh, to handle it there. Moving on to a few Town Hall 12s, guys. Um, how do we identify some of these bases? One thing that I always look for when I start an attack, um, especially at Town Hall 12 where the Warden is pretty powerful and you also see a lot of multi-infernos, um, the defender should have put a, a king or some hero guarding that inferno because it is free for a Warden walk. And then you see that you know right away as you do your preliminary search, what can I Yeti bomb, what can I use bats on, what can I Warden walk, these different expl uh, techniques that can exploit the base very well you kind of go down your checklist and then once you see that okay how can that pair with uh, what warden walks are typically paired with which is going to be a, a smash type attack in this case a pekka bowler smash and you see that okay well we got to get through the base um, probably get that eagle down and then it becomes obvious well we probably want to meet up and kind of have a push that goes through this area down towards the town hall now the town hall is the only thing that makes this a little trickier because it's so far on the back end and sometimes you might want to use a uh, blimp to kind of target the town hall in the back end just let the yetis kill the town hall or some sneaky goblins whatever the case may be but um, in, in this case it's not necessary at town hall 12 that town hall is not quite powerful enough i'm going to go times two as the warden walk happens the town hall is not quite powerful enough to warrant those extreme measures because the Pekkas and the Queen typically, if the Pekkas are going to be full health if you execute this correctly and you get the healers on them, as right now the healers are going to switch on, Pekkas can often be full health on a very well established attack like this with a good pathing through the base and they can often deal with the Town Hall even if it's not you know in the core of the base, even if it's very far in the back end, uh, it can be made to work. Siege Barracks is down instead of that blimp and king pekka wizards all coming out of it or not the king coming out of it but pekka wizards then some hogs to kind of assist i think that was a a good choice and it's going to really help clean up some of these defenses on the outside with the combination of the pekka the wizards and the hogs the siege barracks is a good thing to use if there's kind of these outer compartments that have these walls that aren't quite compartments because they can kind of seep into there and take those out the pekka and the wizards can if it's you know an actual compartment that has some strict walls that cover full compartments and the base is bigger then it's not going to be as effective but if uh, there's a lot of uh, room for things to walk into the base you can get more value with the siege barracks often so like i said all those pekkas are full health jump spell didn't quite reach far enough to let everything through but the pekkas and the queen and everything made its way there and it works out nicely so let's take a look at number 15 one more town hall 12 here then we'll show a few 11s um this one i think the queen charge was definitely a go-to because there's nothing really covering nothing too anti-queen charge in this area the infernos on multi you have a lot of value the eagle the queen is in the area 
It's really just about can you funnel your queen into the base, and with the help of the super wall breakers, it was a little bit close, I thought, but you'll see that it does in fact work out. I think the queen might have been a little bit close to the 12 o'clock position, meaning she should have been a little bit closer to the king in deployment, because that laboratory and that storage scare me, and you'll see what I mean here. Super wall breaker does a great job opening that up. Right here, I think she goes for the inferno, but I think it could have been close. She could have gone for the uh, for the storage there. Next super wall breaker continues to open things up and hopefully that Wi-Fi uh, indicator will go away. I think, uh, you know, my connection's been bad all day to be honest, but anyway, um, I'll just ignore it for now and we'll see if I have to cut away or not. One thing that I think I really like Okay, well I am back, um, I did cut away, uh, hopefully at about the same time, maybe a little bit before when I dropped out. Um, yep, that is the, the Wi-Fi, it'd be like that sometimes. But anyway, what I was gonna say, and that's a very unfortunate seeking your mind, that just hit that uh, slammer instead of the loon. But the slammer is a really great way, I think a well-planned attack often uses the slammer very well, um, especially in this type of, of way. There's no air defense coverage in the top part of the base. So before the Lalo even happens, or I guess at about the same time as the Lalo, the Slammer is already down, already working, taking out all kinds of buildings that otherwise the balloons are a little bit too fragile to take out, just because there's not any heavy hitters like the Queen or any air defenses up in that area. Now a lot of the balloons get really low and die because of the Warden's ability didn't quite cover the town hall, but even still it shows this was a very well planned attack because the balloons will still finish off the job with plenty of haste spells to cover everything. So that's one thing if you can get a queen charge going like it was done here, then also have an area that's very susceptible to uh, being targeted by the slammer. There's not a whole lot of air defenses, not the queen there, and the CC was just a baby dragon that was poisoned. If that's the case, um, use the slammer there and you can get a lot of value before you even start your Lalo, or even better, at the same time as your Lalo, and things kind of meet up as they move through the base, because um, you don't want to wait too long to start your Lalo. Let's wrap this up with a few Town Hall 11s. Um, taking a look at this base here, I'm just going to go ahead and let it run uh, for sake of time, but let's talk about why we're hitting it like this. You can see that there is a lot of value right around the Queen, um, these expos, the expos are a big value uh, point at Town Hall 11 especially. Um, and you can see here that next to a multi-inferno, if you start to shave the base down a little bit, you think, okay, I can get some good value with an Electro Dragon coming in. Instead of using the blimp or trying to do that, it's better to try to use the slammer and set it up with your heroes. That way you're taking out defenses along the way. It's a little bit more controlled. So the queen was used to take out the air defense, which is a big no-no for the uh, slammer. It can't handle air defenses very well. Um, so queen takes that out. King is going to take out these other defenses and secure the pathing for the slammer just to kind of waltz right in there, get onto that multi-inferno. Um, and then right here, it is doing with the sweeper, but there's going to be a freeze that helps out. There's a poison that helps with those air skellies, and one of those expos is on ground, which is also helpful. E-drags are going to step up here um, and get a few shots off. They're going to be very uh, important. Another, another few minions come in. I'm not sure what the purpose of that was, but maybe someone can point that out in the comments if there's a, a good reason to use uh, minions to kind of support your E-drags. Or and I don't mean that sarcastically. Maybe there was a reason to take out you know uh, little things like uh, skeletons. So anyway, everything moves through here. Um, Decent Lalo pathing on the back end. A single Inferno is one of the main things. You know, it tends to not be as good against Lalo. Even if it locks on your Lava Hounds, it's not going to hurt your balloons very much. Nice freeze on the back end. That Warden's ability is, you know, almost swag, to be honest. And uh, this will wrap up with quite a few balloons left up. And a uh, Golem that we did not know was in there that just came out. Very nice. 
one more Town Hall 11 and we will wrap up this uh, rather long but hopefully helpful video going through how to attack some of these bases. This is one of my favorite Town Hall 11 attacks from this war. Um, and if you just look at the base, when you have a base that's kind of skinny like this and you know a lot of these expos can be they're quote unquote walkable, meaning they can be taken out by the queen on a queen walk from the outside of the base without having to use wall breakers or a jump spell or anything. And when that's the case, um, it's often a good idea to use hogs or miners or something like that because you can invest a lot more spells in them and they're very spell heavy army attacks or army compositions. Um, the more heals and the more rages you have, the better. So if you can do a queen walk that gets good value and can make the base narrow, which in this case, the base because of the wall setup is very narrow, if you can get all that achieved, and also the sneaky goblin's kind of a, a sneaky thing in the CC. Um, I haven't seen much of that, but that is interesting. Um, anyway, if you can if you can get a good value with your queen charge without having to actually use a, any spells on her, such as a jump spell or even quakes or whatever the case is, that's a that's good for miners, and the pathing is narrow. The other side also has these big inlets, these big uh, gaps where there's no walls, allowing the siege barracks to get value with the P.E.K.K.A., pushing everything through. And even though it's you know not perfect in terms of how everything you know paths through the, through the base, it's narrow, and we can devote a lot of spells to keeping the queen up and to keeping up the hogs and miners in the form of these rages and then these heals. So you can kind of overpower the base, especially at Town Hall 11. I'm a big fan of using these queen walks slash queen charges that don't require uh, wall breakers or jump spells because they tend to be much more efficient. And if you get good value from them, even with just four healers, uh, you can really invest a lot of your other troops and spells into taking out the rest of the base, which is often the best way to do it. So. That'll wrap things up. A ton of miners left up. We always like to see that. And thanks for watching this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time. Bisectatron out.